So good morning uh, to everybody. Thank you for the uh, invitation for this very important meeting and uh, thank you for the last week's uh, great opportunity to cooperate with uh, the European uh, Committee and European Commission. And uh, we want to show you how advanced is now emitting and how we can use the not only 3D reconstruction models but there are other holograms for uh, operation of any kind of procedures. So I am interventional cardiologist, hybrid operator, responsible for uh, fixing of structural heart disease. And in this field of cardiology, certainly we need uh, good imaging to discuss uh, uh, the plan of operation, the plan of the procedure, we need to know some measurements to decide which uh, valve, uh, which uh, the device uh, will be implanted. So I'm just uh, taking my HoloLens uh, uh, device. So this is the well-known Microsoft HoloLens um, imaging. And uh, we do a segmentation of um, uh, the heart from computer tomography and we are converting this with the with MEDAM uh, software uh, to um, holographic view. Now, I hope that you can see what I can see. So I'm just before the operation and I can see the heart of my patient on the screen. And now I'm looking in, holo in hologram and then you can uh, follow with me that we can see this heart we can zoom in, okay, but we need to turn on. <laughs> we need to reset and to install. So I can show you that we can, uh, we can rotate this uh, picture. We can observe from any perspective, from any angle, we can think about the operation, and what is the most important, we can have even cutting of the structure in any kind of the uh, plane which we want. Moreover, the most important thing we want to present to you is uh, to show to other people that if they have the HoloLens uh, with, uh, uh, with them, so many people could see the same picture at the same time. So we are almost ready to show today that if five operators in different countries, in different locations uh, in Europe, they will uh, use the same HoloLens uh, picture, they can discuss the strategy of the operation. This could be very important for the very difficult uh, procedures. This could be very important for discussion of very uh, strategic uh, approaches with, uh, uh, with some operations. And also, this will be very important for educational purposes. So if we have less experienced operators, then we can uh, really discuss with them how to do these operations, how to decide, and then you can do everything what you want. So now I am looking with whole lens on the heart of the patient. This is the real computer tomography picture of the patient. Zoom in. So now you can see that I have the uh, zoom in, zoom out. Zoom out so I can see the perspective. Moreover, I can see this heart and I can rotate as I want to see the, each part of the heart. So left ventricle, the aorta, uh, left uh, uh, atrium, and then I can look even inside to be closer or uh, to be far. And then it is really helping you know the imaging. So I hope that uh, Mr. Um, uh, Kierewka will give you now the whole length is that you can see also those pictures in Brussels. And then, as I said, when, especially when we have the 5G connection, we would be speedy enough so those pictures can see few operators and decide how to help our patients, how to improve the diagnosis, how to probably in near future improve the safety of the procedure, and moreover, uh, the few operators could see in the same 
this picture would really help to have the multidisciplinary approach, multi-center approach for very difficult cases. So now again, so I can rotate, I can zoom out, you can follow with the comments which are by just wording or clicking with your fingers, zoom in, zoom out, Half start. Okay, and now you can see that I can use as the electronic knife. So you can see that in more details, I can see the zoom in. I can see the old structure of the heart, uh, which would be cut it, so I can go inside for operation and to know all details of my patient. And this patient is with the aortic valve uh, disease, so I can plan the operation. Zoom in. So this is basically what we want to show you from uh, Krakow. I, uh, if you have any questions, then uh, Mr. Kierka will show you probably uh, the HoloLens pictures in your uh, HoloLens systems in Brussels. Okay. Thank you very much. And we can switch to our presentation. And okay, so now Mateusz Kierka met up uh, in cooperation with Professor Dudek, please. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to our meeting today. My name is Ralph Sequitz. I'm the uh, chairman of the board of directors of MedEl. And with me is Mateusz Kierewka, the CEO and founder and our mad scientist. Uh, uh, and, uh, and we thank you for coming out today. Uh, what we will be talking about is precisely the impact of uh, remote medicine and remote medicine tools on healthcare today. This was our first presentation uh, with Professor Dudek. Uh, as you can see, we are using already this technology in uh, uh, surgeries. It was uh, first uh, surgery using holographic uh, technology in Poland, and it was also first uh, holographic technology used in uh, all the world uh, using uh, uh, TAVI and uh, uh, other uh, surgeries in, on, on the heart. So uh, TAVI or TAVR basically is trans-aortal trans valve replacement. Uh, what is happening right now is uh, the world is uh, aging and basically the problems that we're so solving with telemedicine right now is we manage the abundance of data. Uh, there is plenty of data coming into healthcare from, uh, from, from a huge about abundance of sources. Uh, that data needs to be collated, it needs to be understood, and it needs to be applied to the benefit of the individual patient. Uh, we also uh, enable remote tele uh, medicine. As you've seen a second ago, a few seconds ago, Professor Dudek was in Krakow uh, with a device that allowed him to see a human individual, human's heart, remotely. Uh, we could have had a procedure today, and he could have been assisting a, um, a doctor in the United States. He is a world-class specialist. He could have been assisting someone in China, in, uh, in the Middle East or Central Africa in a, uh, in a procedure. So that's quite remarkable. And, uh, and, we have, and we have supernatural appearances here too. My heart disease. Right. So, uh, so we are when it comes to Europe itself, and uh, and, and Meta is a, a pretty remarkable company, and I, I I have to say I'm extremely proud to be part of it because we started out as a small as a small uh, startup in Poland, Krakow, Poland, and because we cooperate with companies like Microsoft using their uh, using their infrastructure, we actually are right now a global company with presence in the Middle East, in the United States, and Europe. Uh, in Europe, we we solve a very big problem, which is uh, which is actually, and I'll come back to this slide. 
Uh, you can see it specifically in the part of uh, in the part of Europe where we come from. Uh, there is a large problem with heart disease. Uh, heart disease is one of the main killers in in the world, uh, and so we have decided to start out with interventional cardiology. Uh, we've developed our product with Professor Dudek and. Uh, uh, we are actually starting to uh, currently market it. We've uh, we've had the first two uh, we've had the first two procedures of, as Mateusz has mentioned, uh, on uh, in in valve replacement, and it's it's quite remarkable. So the reason why we have decided that our base product is actually remote EKG, we have uh, we have a product where uh, a patient is able to. Uh, is able to wear a device, and in real time we can diagnose any uh, any kind of uh, heart malady. Specifically, uh, specifically, this is needed because the population is growing in the world. Uh, there's more and more of us. Uh, we are, by definition of of a better quality healthcare, aging, and so the ratio of provider to patient right now is very unfavorable. And it's actually amazing because I come from the United States and we lag behind Europe in the patient provider ratio. Uh, in the Middle East, it's even worse than that. So there are areas where, uh, where telemedicine is absolutely needed and it can be used to connect patient and provider globally. Uh, it was very interesting because we've been and I say that with great pride. We've uh, been part of the uh, HIMSS show, Healthcare Information Management show in Orlando, a couple of months ago, and we had one of the visitors come to our stand, and immediately there and then, with our 30-second demo EKG, we were able to, we were actually able to, uh, to diagnose the gentleman with atrial fibrillation, and the gentleman said, "No, that's impossible." So next day he goes to a clinic to, to Florida hospital, spends four hours in tests. Well, he had atrial fibrillation. So the ability to automatically diagnose someone, uh, to do it remotely, uh, is changing medicine. Exactly as Mr. Boney has said, we, we're changing the model from an interventional model to a prevention, pre preventive model. And that obviously helps save human lives. So from an architecture perspective, we, uh, we base our architecture on uh, the Microsoft Azure product uh, on, in a variety of levels. We are develop developing further uh, predictive analytics, uh, which will allow us to tell people that they're going to have a heart attack within a reasonable period of time. Our, our ambition is uh, to have at least seven, uh, seven days prediction within, within about 12 months, which again is a huge difference because it is a difference between calling the ambulance versus telling the person to go to a hospital. And interesting thing about about uh, heart disease, it's actually very easy to take care of once you know that it is going to happen. It is quite catastrophic if you catch it in the last moment or don't catch it at all. Uh, we uh, we do it. Uh, we work with uh, Microsoft based on their in the uh, infrastructure as a service. That's why, from a small company in Krakow, we were able to become a global company because we're using 50 global data centers. Uh, we're able to access our patients globally. We're able to uh, to give our analysis globally, and of course, then we visualize uh, then we visualize the the effects using the Holoins product. We will show you our, uh, some of our ECG devices, uh, the smallest one which we are using, and th those two <coughs> which we bring with us are medical devices and allows us to fully uh, check uh, your heart. So, and you will see how small th those devices are, and they are really cheap, so they are not so expensive, and uh, this is why we are using them as a, uh, one of our solutions. It shows that he's the technologist and I'm the, I'm the guy in charge of finance. They're, <laughs> high qual they're very high quality and expensive devices. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what Professor Dudek has actually shown is, is very interesting. The, so the problem that we solve using the, uh, the augmented reality visualization service is we are able to change the way 
uh, interventional cardiologists prepare for, for a procedure. Uh, what happens right now is an interventional cardiologist team receives, uh, receives a multitude of flat pictures of a human heart in order to prepare for, a, uh, for, for surgery. And they spend a couple of days on preparation, analysis, then they give it to the actual procedure team. They spend about a day on that. So uh, we've converted that to seconds and we say we can, we can save about 170,000 seconds of work to, the, to, to a team, which is uh, in excess of two days. Uh, so not only do we increase the speed of, uh, of, of procedure, uh, we increase the throughput for the hospital, so it's a, uh, it is an efficiency tool for both the interventional cardiologists, it is an efficiency tool for the, uh, for the hospital, but also it creates the ability to very precisely look at a human heart. What you have seen is a three-dimensional, and we can do four-dimensional, so we can, actually, we can actually animate the heart of an individual patient in real time as it beats in his chest. And instead of doing a lot of good quality guesswork, the cardiologist understands what the heart looks like, where are the maladies, and understands where to go into the heart and what to do with great precision. So again, we're creating previously unattainable information and data, allowing, allowing cardiologists to do a much better, much better work. So as you have seen, we're using right now the most advanced, advanced augmented reality tool in the world, uh, which allows you not only to analyze the, the problem with the patient, it actually allows you to, to partake in the procedure you wearing this device. Because as you, as, as, uh, you will see, and, and uh, we have shown a little bit of that already, you're able to actually see the heart itself and see the patient at the same time. So what we do is we connect the patient, uh, we connect the provider, uh, we provide automatic analysis, again, because our algorithms, uh, algorithms automatically analyze maladies, uh, and we turn the model of medicine from interventional to preventive. We already show you how um, we prepare for this kind of surgery, and uh, to be honest, uh, without Professor Dudek and his knowledge, it would be impossible to start this kind of uh, technology change for uh, surgerists. And uh, we start this uh, process uh, to developing this kind of uh, tools uh, for HoloLens. It was uh, almost eight months ago, something like this. Uh, so we can see a huge progress and. Um, we today show you our, this is first time when we can show you something which is uh, quite incredible because all of those HoloLens are connected together. If someone of you just uh, move uh, this heart, everybody sees the same movement. And uh, why it is so important? Because we can connect a lot of doctors uh, from di different countries and they can prepare to surgery using this tool and they can see in three dimensional using HoloLens technology, uh, uh, heart of patient uh, and can they can prepare to the surgery and this is really really huge step in the pro in the future and without 5G and without a good connection it will be impossible. That's, that's why we have some small problems but mainly the problem was with the sound not with connection. But this is how we start today and this is a, a hospital room where. Today, uh, Professor Dudek is uh, right now and uh, he is preparing to surgery. This heart we just saw today is one of uh, the heart of one of those patients which will be today uh, prepared for this surgery. This is another picture from this uh, uh, operation room. And this, this image is maybe not so uh, good and this is uh, something which uh, is uh, looking like some mess, but this is really, really important to doctor to see this kind of image using three dimension. If you can move to, uh, forward, 
Uh, right now, our technology is so uh, imp uh, improved that uh, this, uh, what we, you saw on the previous slide, right now is uh, in much b uh, better quality, with uh, better uh, uh, view. And uh, to show you the, uh, the step, we start uh, with images which was uh, about one gigabyte. Uh, right now, we are sending uh, to each of those HoloLens which were about eight gigabytes per second. It is that's why we need so big computer here. But uh, in the future, which we already uh, fin finalize, we will send those data to the cloud, and from the cloud, from servers in the cloud, we will send to the HoloLens. And this is another step which we are taking right now. Professor Dudek, uh, this is his first. Uh, 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 meeting with HoloLens. <laughs> this first time when he uh, wore this uh, new device, we bring this uh, HoloLens from uh, Microsoft from United States. This is uh, uh, our first uh, public show. It was uh, uh, on uh, uh, December 2016. It was uh, uh, 2,000 uh, surgeries from all over the all over the world. So, uh, they sh uh, saw the first. Uh, preparation to surgery using this HoloLens technology. And as you can see, uh, at the first stages, we need to connect HoloLens using this cable from uh, Professor Today HoloLens to the computer. Right now, we are using wireless uh, connection. This is another picture. And this is first ablation uh, in Poland, also using HoloLens. Another uh, doctor uh, from uh, Warsaw, uh, Medical University, they are also using this, this technology. And what you see here actually this happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is absolutely transformational again. This is, uh, this, this is a, a revolutionary development that people are able to use that type of tools in order to, uh, in order to assist in, uh, in surgery. We are basically coming into science fiction. What we used to see as science fiction is becoming reality right now. So uh, we're very proud to do that, and, and I have to say, I have to say one thing. When uh, when Mateusz bought the Hololens the first time, he said, "Listen, you need to bring something for the United States." I'm like, sure, no problem. So stuff comes to my house, and my at that time, time ten year old son opens the box, and says, "Dad, cool toy, awesome games," <laughs> and I called Mateusz, and I'm like, "Do we have too much money?" <laughs> Did, 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 do I not know something? Uh, and, and Mateusz says, and I said, he's the mad scientist. He said, just trust me. Okay, I trusted him. I waited, waited a couple of months. And then at the Congress, I saw the ability of this tool to transform our product and to transform what we do. And I was taken aback. And I was taken aback not about what I saw really myself in the product, but by these 2,000 cardiologists that were going all oh, ooh and ah, and when can we have it in our hands, and when can you come to market with it? Uh, so uh, we see that as an amazing tool. We see that medicine is completely changing right now. It is becoming more collaborative. Uh, it is becoming more advanced through the ability of people to talk, to work together, to understand what is happening with the human body. And uh, we are delighted to work on that and provide these uh, these solutions to to further medicine globally. And of course, one of the reasons why we do it is, uh, and this is sad. I come from industry. I actually started working with uh, with process visibility tools in industry. So, if you look at what has happened happening in it, in industry. It, there is no reason why oil and gas is using process visibility tools before before medicine. I mean, with all due respect, driving our cars is important, but surviving to drive them is even more important. So with that, thank you very much. We're obviously open for your questions later on, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Uh, I, I think that uh, it was important uh, 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 to look uh, at those uh, achievements uh, because 
you know, uh, as a member of European Parliament, when we are starting a debate if 5G is needed or not, yes, I think that it's better to discuss not uh, on some technical issues that we need infrastructure as infrastructure, but show to the people what kind of effects we can have building this uh, uh, 5G. Uh, uh, effects for people, effects for patients, yes, because there are uh, uh, clear, real uh, uh, benefits for that. Uh, now we want to continue, and I, uh, 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 I want to give the floor to Olivier Benoit, uh, uh, EU Policy Director from ACT, the UP Association. Please, we are on the same track, how we can use applications, devices for better medicine. Thank you.